maybe the way that you had envisioned <laughs> it anyway. Well, as it turned out, it was rather, rather a pleasant experience for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, so where, where were you when, they, um, when the Pearl Harbor happened? Do you remember what were your oh, yes. remembrances of that? I was a high school sophomore, and uh, you know, it was an ominous feeling. Did it come, did you hear about it through telephone, someone calling you, or how did you? I uh, had I'd been with my friends, I think, on a Sunday afternoon, came home late in the afternoon, and the family was very concerned. Mm -hmm. um, They'd heard about it on the radio or something? They'd heard about it on the radio, and I suppose somebody called, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, it was a life-changing experience, of course. Mm -hmm. A little... I knew at the time, but, you know, it felt like it was a life-changing, a threatening experience just mm -hmm. at the moment it happened, mm -hmm. and then, of course, it grew on you later. So then you went from um, your basic then, and then where were you, did you go immediately overseas then? I mean, after I, that one. After I finished my training, yes, it was... Uh, well, you have boot camp, and then, and then the uh, four months of training, and then shortly, they gave me a, a short leave to go home, and I'm pictured on that page with. Well, this is this is right before you were ready to. Yeah, start. I guess I'm not pictured with my friends, but I took this two. My husband. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then Wayne and then mom. And then yeah, this is Mary's husband here. Little brother Wayne and then. So you had two two brothers then? Yes. But they weren't, was the, um, what one was this, the Ned? Ned. Was he, Ned, did next he in age. Sir, he's not, was no. too young. And he missed the Korean thing. He was in ROTC, ROTC at Iowa State. I don't know how he missed Korea, but. His stomach. Okay. You know, he was just on borderline ulcers. Sure. And yeah. they didn't want him. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy about that. He was happy <laughs> So from, um, so did you go out of San Francisco then, or where did you? Well, yes. let's go through North Platte. Oh, oh yeah, we haven't <laughs> even got to where I right through there. You, think went, that you went home for a vacation, a uh, yeah, I leave, and um, I took two friends. And uh, one of them I'm still in contact with. Just wrote him an email oh, yesterday. Uh, and he's the, the one that crossed the country with me. We were together through the whole war. The other one went to into the submarine business, and we never heard from him again, so I don't really? know. Uh, I never knew what happened to him. I've looked on the casualty list from a number of the submarines. I can't even find where he was assigned, but I assume he was. Hmm. But, uh, anyway, you lose contact with a lot of people over the years. Interesting. Now, this island is down in the Pacific, of course, and you can get on the internet, and they have a camera, and you can do a scan, uh -huh. mm. and you can see the jungles have come back. Japanese said, Americans know jungle fighters, Americans remove jungle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, the Japanese came back and tried to have a little band of them. They were hidden in caves. Mm -hmm. And they came back, I think it was 11 years later, and tried to take over the island. Just a small group of them. And for just... Well, they were out of touch. Mm -hmm. They were just out oh, of touch. Oh, I remember Fanatics. at the movies seeing how they would come out of the caves and hear the, you know, the last Japanese. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw one of them. I was up, went up to take some photographs from, from an observation tower on the tallest peak on the island, which wasn't very tall. But there was a tower there, and I went up and took my pictures. And on the way down, I saw somebody scurry mm -hmm. across the trail, half naked. This was half when naked. you were in the service. Yeah. That, what that island was that? Kalalu. Kalalu <laughs> was one of the uh, big battlegrounds, an unnecessary battle, as it turns out. But that's covered in my link, more oh, lengthy good. report. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm spelling phonetically here. <laughs> okay, well, Kalaloo's in there, and the Palau Islands. And, uh, what did you think of North Platte? Or tell us about North Platte. North Platte. Here's where I feel like an imposter. It's been a long time ago, and how much yeah. is created 
in my mind uh, after 64 years. But uh, uh, my buddy and I remained on the train. We didn't smoke. We didn't drink coffee. And uh, it was a crowd. It was just a mob. You, you had 15 minutes. And if you weren't back on that train, that was big trouble. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, you need to go in there and stand around in a smoky, crowded room to get coffee we don't want. <laughs> so we stayed on the train. Mm -hmm. It was Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. presently, here came some ladies with baskets of food. That's all I remember about it, and we were appreciative. Uh, we'd had a, a decent Thanksgiving dinner, but... Uh, was it sandwiches that, that they that, had? Yeah, or? the sandwich I had, I remember it was a bologna sandwich with a generous portion of butter on it. Now these people were, you know, bologna was a purchased product, mm -hmm. and they used their rations. That's right. And uh, I'm sure the butter was homemade. I'm sure of that, too. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of things were. But um, I was just so impressed. So that, that is these people something that we've had several people actually remember, like you did, the food item. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I just I think that's... These people, you know, it was... You, said you started to say you were so impressed. Oh, with, uh, that these people would, would do this on Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. That was... Uh, and one of the, you know, we've done some outside reading in one of the, um, I think it was in March of 1945, um, they had kept how much they had used of, eat, of different items, and one of them was butter, and they'd used 435 pounds of butter in that month mm -hmm. at the canteen. So sure. that's a lot, uh, a lot of butter. They weren't sparing with it. <laughs> no, no. And... Uh, I remember on the way back, I was looking forward to the stop in North Platte, but of course the canteen was closed by then. Oh, okay. So you were, you, you served until when? Uh, I, I came back through there in late April or early, I think it was early May of, yeah. of 46. Right. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, yep. and those, North Platte was closed all across Iowa. We, we went across Iowa late afternoon. Well. The school was out, and all the high school girls were coming down to, to greet the service man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and hand up some cookies or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Iowa gave us a generous welcome, in uh -huh. my memory. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are obviously some of the natives, then. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I know in my trading, I, I did a lot of trading with the native people and the because we were kind of independent mm -hmm. uh, and after the war. And uh, so I found these things. They, they were probably taken by Japanese, I suppose. Mm -hmm. What do you mean uh, you were independent? Well, we were occupying these islands, but uh, there was less and less. It, it was a very informal situation. I was on a small craft, and we were... We had our assignments to operate pretty independently, um, but there was little formality in my mm -hmm. We dressed extremely casually, uh, and you know we had our assignments and we did them. And it was a, not a very regimented world, so I was lucky in that regard. Mm -hmm. Now this was all the time you served, or just just after all the time in the Pacific, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's in the in the larger story. So the express better, and I'll remember it now. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in a major battle? No. Lucky. <laughs> Very lucky. Yeah, and I think of being on that troop ship with two thousand men. And uh, with a. We've talked to a couple of other fellows that have been in the Navy, and they've just said the well, not barracks, but the areas where you stayed were very, very crowded. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. We lived in one one compact compartment, and that included the, the galley and the dining, and it was a pretty small room and bunks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
Where did you get on the ship? That so. was at the place called Elithi, again in the larger report. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, in California. Oh, oh, in California? I got on the ship in San Francisco. Yeah. And the, oh, the troop ship. How long did you get to sleep? Oh, sometimes a long time because there was nothing else to do. Too much sleep, huh? There were times that I think we how did, were too lazy. How did you spend the day? I mean, here you're on, you're trapped in this troop ship, and you're going to be going day oh. to day. So what did you do? Well, on the troop ship, yeah, like you say, we got our sleep, and uh, you'd sit around on deck. It was rather pleasant most of the time. We were in tropical seas. Uh, Any storms? Uh, bad storms? Not while I was on the troop ship, but certainly when we were out there and on the small craft, weathering a storm like we encountered on the small craft was a very scary thing mm -hmm. because you could lose control and go drifting all over the ocean. And we're just a little vessel with little navigation gear. In fact, none, okay, except the compass. How many were on that ship? Oh, uh, eight to 11. Oh, okay. It was a landing craft that we were on. And so, so you went from the troop ship to the landing craft? Yeah. And, and then what was the, and you went from there to the island? Or what? Uh, we, I was always based on this landing craft. But then we would, after the war was over, we no longer anchored out so much, but we would beach craft and spend the night near the shore. Well, what was the purpose of having those small ships out there? Well, there were, no, there were no the wharves world. or harbors. And so we served as the, the harbor uh, craft to take cargo from oh. cargo ships to the, to the fighting ships. I see. There were huge anchorages. The Ulithi was a huge anchorage. And again, I describe it all in my written mm -hmm. story. But Ulithi was a huge anchorage, about a thousand ships, and the changing every day. So they flew in the supplies to the island, and then you put them? Seldom flown in, all by ship, in those years. There was well, an airstrip, but, but not a big transport. I'm confused. You say you took the supplies from the island to the big ship? No, from ship to ship. Oh, from the ship? From uh, supply cargo ships to the troop, uh, to okay. the fighting ships. No, the, the okay. cargo never touched okay. the land. So those, the fighting ships would be? It would be in this anchorage. It's a huge atoll, it's a lagoon. Right. That was a, a new word that I didn't with, know before until I started reading about it. A lagoon that. with a string of islands. Mm -hmm. And you can see a little map of it in here that I hand drew. But is your landing, is your um, landing ship in here or whatever boat? Did you have a picture of that? Oh, yes. Is that it? Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, the, those aren't very good pictures, are they? But it's kind of a barge affair. So I was a very casual Navy man. So they would come in with that, and then you would take them out to these ships, a thousand ships that are out there yeah. all over the place. Food, uh, aircraft fuel. Uh, a lot of fighting ships had a single aircraft for observation. You know, the destroyers, battleships, uh, and they would launch them with uh, catapults. Mm -hmm. And so they, they would take barrels of fuel. We did a lot of that. Ammunition? Uh, certainly. Bombs? A lot so of, they, yes, they, bombs, mines. So they would be deployed. Not exactly the, most, yeah. <laughs> the most secure feeling when you're carrying a cargo of mines. Were mm -hmm. there ever any spies out there? You know, we had some. You know how they came? They came to this little atoll, you know those all those islands? You know how they came? Yep. Kind of. Oh, really? Yeah. And they caused some destruction, too. Yeah. Were Just these Japanese? Mm -hmm. Japanese? I presume. Yeah. Suicidal. So they would just come in and radio back whatever information they had? And no, they'd just they come in and blow themselves uh, up. And blow themselves up. Oh, and trying to. Trying to cause as much havoc as possible. Did you ever have any fun on your side? I'm sure. See, that's... That always happens in war. You, you're onto something. That's exactly right. You always try to figure out what the other guy's going to do. <laughs> yep, that's a good question. 
Was Henry with you on these crafts then, or was he on a different one? He was a different one, but we were in the same flotilla. Because I had the idea he didn't, wasn't his, went down or something, he lost his watch. Mm -hmm. no, was yes, he lost one, one in a storm, I think. A storm. Okay. Uh -huh. Who is Henry? I'm the friend. The friend. The, okay. the, yeah, the, only, friend. the only guy that was with me throughout the war. Okay. I just and we weren't in sure. the same mm -hmm. vessel, but we were. We, you were on, he was on another ship in the same area. Yeah. Uh, at one point, he was in a in a different uh, group of islands, but then eventually the, we combined again. Mm -hmm. so but his ship, what happened is that they were carrying, I think, some Sherman tanks, as I recall. He, uh, these landing craft were designed to carry mm -hmm. five Sherman tanks. Oh, they're that big. Yeah. And so uh, they were out at sea and hit some very rough seas and the tank started to move on deck and flopped and flopped his vessel. So he survived a, a shipwreck, sort of. You know, you send a bunch of 18-year-olds out to run these things, it's, it's amazing it ever works at all. You were 18 years old when you yeah. graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, it's amazing, I've said this, it's a game probably going to hit me, I've said it many times, but it's amazing we won the war. You know, I mean, the, the Japanese are so much more they uh, fanatical. Right, plus their mentality, you know, I mean, yeah. it was either, but I mean, they, they just had so many sh or ships and, and planes and everything. Sure. We had to play such catch-up. We did. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, our home front just made all the difference in the world, mm -hmm. both to both uh, four efforts. Mm -hmm. it, was, it is. It's an amazing story. Mm -hmm. Were you on land? Uh, most of the time I was on the water, but near land. And we would, we would come to shore usually every night, but not always. So I'm just trying to picture a thousand ships. Yeah. I mean that that has got to be just And that <laughs> all I, in I don't have a copy of this um, Time magazine article. Is it somewhere there? There was a newspaper article at the very, very bad. No, there's a there's a page with I think somewhere with a Time magazine. Now that's from life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was Was that it? Well, maybe I don't have it. Um, I have. I've looked it up. Tell me about your interaction with the natives. Oh, there was quite a bit of it. Um, the natives are these primitive people, or yeah. I mean, I don't know. Stone Age people. Um, we were at Ulithi, string of islands. There was a native population and probably the internet can give you more information than I can at this point. But they were um, they were basically subsisting there before the war on coconuts and fish. And they they rode about in their beautifully carved and painted dugout canoes, outriggers, with a, a stabilizer on the okay. one side, like I've a sidecar. Mm -hmm. You've seen those? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, they were skillful in the use of those canoes and they would they could make nets I suppose coconut fiber or that something like that they would cast nets in the surf and they were out in their boats a lot I suppose they would dive for shellfish and that kind of thing hmm. simply don't know that much about was it heavily populated or just kind of no lightly populated uh, but they moved all the native people to one island and that was restricted for our personnel. Uh, we would get near the island, but never, I don't think I ever did go on that island. Can't be sure of that. I might have later on, but uh, at least, well, everything was intense in, in Lithy. I didn't go there, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But the people would come out to us, and they liked to trade, talk, and so they what liked... What language did they speak? Well, pigeon English. Oh. We all did pigeon English mm -hmm. and gestures. You can talk a lot that way. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and they wanted, well, they bartered for things. Mm -hmm. They learned that there was a good market in Japanese souvenirs, and they had all kinds of 
Japanese stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now, how have they gotten there? Well, well they get killed. Yeah, the Japanese had been on the island before the Americans. And they didn't oh, like the Japanese much. But there hadn't been a lot of Japanese there. So I guess the big market in Japanese paraphernalia was later when I went down to the Palau Islands after the war. Uh, but the Ulithi population... Did yeah. you not fear them? I mean, you thought you could trust them? Oh my, yes. Okay, so there, there was, was no, no question in your mind that they might be sympathetic to the Japanese? Oh no, they, they liked the Americans. And we gave them candy and cigarettes really helped them out, gave them some cigarettes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I suppose a generous person might even give me his beer ration. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. But, at any rate, they liked us. And, uh, it was, I think it was more social there. Uh, they were heavily tattooed, mm. the men. They chewed betel nut. Betel nut caused the... You know, the equivalent of our chewing tobacco, I suppose. They would take some white powder, sprinkle it onto a leaf, curl it up, and chew it like a plug of tobacco. And then they would spit blood red. <laughs> and their well, teeth, well and well their teeth well. turned black. Mm -hmm. So there are these people with black teeth, blood red, and saliva and uh, tattoos all over. <laughs> it's picturesque. I wish I had my camera there. <laughs> Not actually the South Pacific musical then. <laughs> and um, the women wore grass skirts, and that's it. Hmm. And then uh, some of them came along on occasion, but not too often. Mostly it was the men who came out did the important business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After the war, the king of the group got to ride in an airplane. Oh, for the yeah. thing. Yeah, they took him off. And let's see what else. Well, I, I can't, you know, I just... And then, of course... The fact that ships, they've got a thousand ships out there. <laughs> well, then did they, did they, uh, like if there was a... I think the sea would be fine. Oh, I know, a thousand ships just below me. I mean, yeah, well, it's a big anchorage. But when I came up topside that first morning, there were seven aircraft carriers right in a row. Hmm. First class carriers, the big They're ones. massive. I mean, yeah, they're I mean, massive. And there they were. And I looked around that harbor, and I recognized the profiles because we'd been trained to do mm -hmm. something. And oh, my gosh. It, you know, so I, I did find the war. <laughs> Here it is. Mm -hmm. It was most impressive. And this news article. If you have a source, look up the uh, time, old Time Magazine article. Let me give you the date. It's sure it's here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Okay, let's see if I can find the date. August 4, and August 6, 1945, Time Magazine. And that was telling about what? Page 31. This tells about the mighty atoll. And this is where you were, where you were, um... That's where I arrived in the Pacific Theater. And there gives an idea how they were anchored. Now this is an aircraft carrier here, this big guy. Yeah, that's an aircraft carrier. There they are, that's about what I saw. There so was a bunch of them in a row. Do you remember the, the names of any No, there, but I, we were on, we were alongside all of the aircraft carriers. No, you're right. right. The only reason I asked, my dad uh, worked for the Navy during World War II. He built the LSTs in Quincy, okay. Illinois. Oh, we did. Yeah. And then they moved out mm -hmm. to Norfolk, Newport mm -hmm. News, and he built a couple of aircraft carriers. Okay. Or well, helped build them. He didn't build them. <laughs> well, we were, we supplied every aircraft carrier in the mm -hmm. fleet, the, the big ones and the little ones, uh, because they all needed. Uh, it wasn't the aircraft fuel that was hooked. They got that in bulk, but we, we delivered oil, mm -hmm. aircraft, en engine oil. Okay. Ooh, so then the, these these uh, aircraft carriers and all this, then were, they were just deployed from there to when there was a need for, yeah. for a battle or something. When I arrived, it was shortly after Okinawa. 
Oh, okay. And they were staging, I think, for Evo. Uh, so they were all, everybody was home at that time. And then they would leave, and it, was, it wasn't always so crowded. And then at the end of the war, almost everybody left. And uh, our first assignment at the end of the war, and I think this is all covered in my story, we went down to the island of Yap, which is a picturesque, a, a larger island bypassed during the war. And it, it's the most picturesque a native population you can imagine, with their steep roof temples and the carved fronts hmm. and stone money out front along the street. <laughs> you ever, ever see pictures of the stone money? No. Look up Yap. It, it's okay. just amazing. And we were there, the only Americans, just a few of us. And it was Were you called the exciting. Phoebe? No. No. That's we, we were not in construction. They were strictly construction. It says here that the Japanese took all the able-bodied natives with them when okay. they came in. Uh, and it, it talks about them moving them to that island, you know, the other mm -hmm. ones. But right. I suppose I did get on that island down in Ulithia eventually because they had their little temples too, you know, thatched mm -hmm. roofs and they had a pretty good job of building. But the, the one on the app was most impressive. Did you ever get into a situation you felt your life was in danger? Absolutely. Well, in retrospect, there were a lot of things, but <laughs> yeah. at the moment, I don't think I didn't. I never felt immediately threatened. Okay, you didn't think a Japanese sniper was going to pick you off, or no, nothing like that. Um, I think the most ominous one for me was one night there was an air raid, and we were anchor been servicing uh, the, the from the tankers and ammo ships I suppose we were loaded with ammo and we were down there with all the ammunition ships and uh, and tankers Did you hear and, and, the ship had ammunition. and they hit the carrier Randolph that night and so we, we saw a fire you know were they suicide bombers sure. I don't know whether there were two or three just what but just a few and one of them hit this carrier and caused significant damage, but not extensive, but significant. And one of them uh, mistook one of the islands as a battleship, apparently. Hmm. And fortunately, they landed in the only empty place on the island. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but he never knew it. He never knew it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, but that was kind of a scary night, yeah. Mm -hmm. We weren't in the most favorable situation, mm -hmm. but they was were after the... Was anyone on the ship? Oh, sure. The carrier, there were a lot of people there, and I'm sure there were some injuries. Oh, right. How many did was they hold in those big, those big... Weren't they like yeah. four or five thousand that they oh, had yeah, on yeah. just yeah. Was that people. at day or night? That was at night. You ever go on one of those aircraft carriers? No, I haven't, but boy, I'll tell you if yeah. I ever have a chance, I'm going <laughs> yeah, to have a chance. The Yorktown is out at... Uh, Charleston, mm -hmm. Charleston, and the Lexington, and there were several of the mm -hmm. Lexingtons, but the most recent Lexington, which did not serve in World War II, although there was one, uh, it's at Corpus Christi. They are so impressive. There was one, we were in New York City last fall, and there was one there, I'm thinking the Enterprise, but maybe not. I can't remember. My husband would remember. Yeah. And, and it was being refitted, uh -huh. and then it was going to be a tourist right. thing. Well, uh, I liked the, I liked the Lexington the best down in uh, Corpus Christi because it was the most like it would have been in World War Two, although it served after that. Too. Did you hold death charges? Oh, I'm sure we hold them. Yeah, we transported death charges, mines, sure, and we were in the area they were where they threw out death charges, sure. Well, if you had these thousand, they had them out there. Who was protecting them? I mean, did they have? aircraft that was flying around that make sure that somebody, I mean, oh, that would be just like sitting ducks, I would think. If no, yeah. Well, unfortunately for us, the, the Japanese Air Force had been pretty well eliminated from the area, you know, except for a few rogue pilots. Mm -hmm. but, uh, 
it says it, here in this article that 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 concept that you had of um, having service stations out was that was the first time that they had, they had tried that. Yeah, that was unique to the Pacific War and the and the leapfrogging of the islands mm -hmm. and the Japanese. You know, we left huge numbers of Japanese, like on Yap. It was a well fortified island. Well, it, they were there at the end of the war when we went in, and they not served any useful purpose other than just as a de deterrent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the, uh, a um, museum of war here, May 18th. Where is this museum? Um, in the Quad Cities. Really? I'm yeah. not acquainted with it. The school was taken. We just found out yesterday. Oh. Arsenal Island? Putnam. Putnam? Putnam. Oh, at the Putnam. Okay. Putnam. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to explore that. Yeah. I heard they had a tank and they cut it, cut it in half and they put plexiglass over the opening so you can see in the tank. That would be helpful, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Don't don't plan to drive one of those tanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't plan to. I don't like I don't like tanks or submarines much. For Chris or for his birthday, he got a um, it was a History Channel, but it was on dog fights uh, from the uh, he's really good in enjoying finding out all the different airplanes and all the dog fighting. And all the tactics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The tactics that they had back then and what they. What How they, they what, what is that map? That's our counties. Uh, it dates from, I don't know, man, it's an old, old one. Yeah. Virginia is a historian. <laughs> oh, I really? thought the one saw Henderson County. And oh, it's here. Yeah, just, You're from Henderson, not Warren. That's right. Okay. Well. Where did you come across the map? In Wisconsin, we were just in a okay. little shop one day, and they had a bunch of these maps, and lo and behold, there was this one. We had to have it. It was uh, dug out. I'm thinking of art. I mean, post office dug out in Medford Township, Raritan and dug out. Never heard that. Never saw that before. Okay, there it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah. And let's see. Did it give you a date? 1869, isn't it? Entered according. Yeah, 1869. Okay, Olena post office. Warren Mills, yeah. Hopper's yeah. Mill yeah. Post Office. I wouldn't believe what that is now. No. <laughs> Bunch of trashy trailers, this Warren is. Yeah. Huh. This is a very invaluable map. You know that. Well, I don't know. It's valuable to us, Oh, yes. it's very invaluable. I have never seen this map before, and I've seen lots of them. Oh, really? She's a yes. She has a lot of R. A. A. Campbell in the clerk's office of a district court. In the Eastern, Eastern District of Pennsylvania. And what am I doing? Yeah, they just have it as a loose sheet from some book, book, like they do, you know. Oh, my God. She married Dad Dad. So when we came really across it, we said, oh, my, we must have it. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, South Henderson. Nope, I have never seen this map. Hang on to it. We're okay. letting. <laughs> and I haven't put any any note on the back of this one. Sometimes some of these things I haven't noted, but I'll get that. There back. is a plat map from 1868. It may be a companion. Mm-hmm. But I've never seen that map. And these are surely hand colored. Mm-hmm. Nope. I just happened to look over there and I thought, oh, uh, that's Henderson <laughs> County. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note of that uh, because, you know, our kids mm, won't realize Yeah, they won't realize. Soon enough. No, they will not. I'm a big drawer and um, I have this big sketchbook and I've um, sketched a couple of army scenes. Um, army scenes? Yeah. And do you draw maps? No. No? Nope. I haven't thought about that. Maybe what, do what do you draw best? People, uh, animals, uh, cars. A mix of everything. Do you? You like drawing. It's a wonderful thing to pursue. Mm -hmm. She knows that Elizabeth okay. Adcock. Do you know? Uh, she said the married name, but she, she lived in Stronghurst. Grew up in Stronghurst. Lived in town. An only child. Married Ed Adcock, but I can't think of her maiden name. Majored in home economics. Marie. Is that her name too? I just, I just don't know. Hmm. She's 
she probably was married back when she was married in 1953, so somebody... Adcock. Like That's her married name. Oh, Adcock. Thomas? And she died quite young. We were very close oh, friends. Oh, yeah. And um, she had gallbladder surgery and just... Mm -hmm. She might have been a sister. Uh, the lady uh, on the Olena corner, uh, there used to be a, a really nice, nice house. And that, this was she not her maiden name. This was her married name, right? Adcock is her married name. Yeah. And she lived in town. It was in town. Oh, house. in Big town. house. No. See, I am not from the area. Oh, okay. Where well, are you from? Uh, Missouri, near mm -hmm. Sedalia. Mm -hmm. I'm not, it's a little town outside. Sure. But people don't know that, so I just tell them Sedalia. They all know Sedalia because that's the state that, fair. That print was framed in 81. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll get that back on. And I'll also make some notes about a thing, one that you've not seen before, and the, the, the latest edition you're aware of. I want to write that down, too. Is what? Uh, There's a plat. You said there was a plat one in 1868? Yeah. There's a plat map of 1868. Uh, the Gelsberg Library has a copy. It takes each township. And it's invaluable because it is the earliest plat that we have for the county. You would think there would be one in 1850s, but there isn't. Otherwise, it tells exactly who owns the, every piece of land. Mm -hmm. But of course, this isn't the plat. So. Well, no, this is the larger map. You've got the, uh, the townships on there, mm -hmm. but you don't have the, well, they couldn't have the owners and stuff. Dugout. Jacob had a question. For okay. Um, did you ever play games? You know, we didn't do a lot of games. Um, cards? Now, um, they, I don't know, but they might have more equipment than they did back then. Well? I know they play games now. Oh, sure. Um, there was a lot of games. Uh, but one reason I don't remember the games is I didn't participate in that. You weren't a gambler? No, I was not a gambler, <laughs> but uh, uh, payday. There was a redistribution of the wealth. Oh, I bet. Uh -huh. uh, and I, the other thing, you know, you ask about games and so forth. Maybe not games, but you know what we did a lot of? We went to movies. They had outdoor theaters. And... They would send, if we were anchored out in the lagoon, they would send a little boat around, landing craft, an LCT, an LCT, they'd send this boat around and then we'd jump on the boat and they'd take us to the, the main island and then we'd sit in, in the movie. And you didn't sit in seats. You sat on long benches. And it was almost sure to rain. <laughs> so you'd take your poncho, and you'd sit there in the rain and watch the movie. <laughs> and we went to a lot of movies. And it didn't the make any The same ones over and over again? Well, sometimes it, it really didn't make a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. Just nice to be out then. And then they rationed to a beer, and you could buy cigarettes. But every month, or every week, I don't know, you, you'd get a, a couple beers. I know how much they, I, I used to know how much they were worth, and I would cash them out immediately. <laughs> 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 I took my beer. <laughs> yeah. Don, was Maybe. there any way you could get word back to the folks about where you were? Well, that was a game. Uh, that's what I think I remember you Yeah, uh, they wanted to know where I was, and... Uh, of course, all our outgoing mail was censored with a little razor. And how does that, I don't know about that. We haven't heard about that. Cut it out. <laughs> they, we would write these little thin email, uh, V-mails. And they, you know, they were very thin and single page. And the, uh, the censor in our case was our skipper, who was a rather young officer. And the skipper had this little razor knife, exacto knife type of thing. And if he came across something that was prohibited, he would simply cut it out of there. 
and so on. some people, some letters looked rather lacy, <laughs> but he was done with them. Uh, so you knew that you couldn't write much information outgoing. In incoming mail was not censored. So my parents had a a Navy friend, and Mom wrote one time. Leo wonders if you might not be located at Ulithi. They have a huge anchorage there. Well, he was one of the few people that ever heard of such a place, but he was well situated in the Navy. And I wrote back and I said, well, give my regards to Uncle Leo. Uh, is he understands a lot of things or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents knew where I was. <laughs> and it really was not as a national security threat because the Japanese knew we were there right, right. <laughs> in big numbers. But, uh, Did you ever, uh, were you ever on a plane or on a ship long, you know, so long that, you know, you got off and you just, I mean, I would just think it was difficult even to walk? Well, yeah, you got sea legs. You ever go roller skating and then get off of the skates and wonder if, if that ground is stable? <laughs> So that was dead. I've heard of sea legs. Yeah, you get sea legs. Yeah, you kind of do. And you, and you can also get seasick. Did you, you ever get seasick? I didn't. I, I got nauseated. Did any of your friends ever get seasick? Apparently, a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> the first night out at sea, we hit ground swells on this troop transport, and it was chow time. Oh. <laughs> and I won't go into all the details, but uh, I did have some food, and I did keep it down. <laughs> but my, did. most most didn't, I <laughs> swear. <laughs> and it ended up everywhere. I probably wouldn't eat them. You wouldn't? Uh, uh, you know, I had an interesting experience. We were on the troop ship, nothing to do. You asked me what we did. Well, I was assigned to KP. You know what that is? Kitchen Patrol. Yeah. I was assigned to Kitchen Patrol. So I reported to duty down in the, in the galley. And they, I worked, I remember, several afternoons working all afternoon breaking eggs for the next morning scramble, big scramble dish. Mm -hmm. And there was a pre procedure for breaking eggs. You'd break the egg into a dish, and if it was good, you dumped it into this huge pot. And if it was green, you put it over in another pot. And hope. Right, right. So they were actually got. The they were had been in cold storage for months, and a few of them were pretty green. And so we kept most of them out of the big kettle. Well, uh, we've heard about that when they said on North Platte they ate thousands and thousands of hard-boiled eggs and milk and we found out some of it that you got powdered milk most of the time and then powdered eggs for a lot of the time so they were really yeah well i don't remember powdered eggs i remember not many or maybe eggs. they were powdered eggs i mean they green yeah, eggs. no he said powdered. Well, both we've heard both powdered, powdered eggs green. they were eating powdered eggs all the time there one guy laughed and said remember those green eggs yeah <laughs> we had a lot of green eggs and they, they, he was in the Pacific, the guy that said it, Jim Allen, over in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And um, another unique thing, we came across, uh, when we were way out in the Pacific, came across lots of canned butter from Australia. Hmm. Okay. It came in five-pound tins. And, it, of course, in the tropics, it was kind of greasy and sometimes rancid, mm -hmm. but, uh, but not always. How big was the perimeter of the island? Well, those islands were rather small. The perimeter, you, you might be talking a mile or two. You know, a little island, even a tiny island that has a pretty good perimeter, doesn't it? But, uh, I could go around the bike around the Oh, sure. I sure. ride eight miles on the bike. Do you? I walk at this stage in life. I used to run, but I walk now. I, Four miles. I walk in Oh, my. <laughs> I walk in the Good for you. <laughs> I wish. Do you? Good boy. Do it all your life. It's important. I walk in the yeah. May I see your album? 
Well, you're very observant because I noticed that when we asked for something, you knew where, which page to turn to. Yeah. Well, there you are at Great Lakes. What's your favorite subject in school? Um, I don't know. Fine, math. Okay. What yeah. grade are you in? Second. Second grade. I'm in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a reading buddy in third grade. And I go every day. Yeah. Jacob reads. He gets really good at reading too. What do you What do you like to read most? Uh, mostly aircraft and cars. You do read a lot of that kind of thing, huh? You like libraries? Yeah. We might um, we're gonna go to today. Where? No, Mama. 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 Public or? Mama. Okay. Oh, I'm even a map. <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe I traced it there or something, but hand drawn mm -hmm. anyway. Well, that makes it even more special. Hmm. Yeah. Tell the story the about Navy, when Donnie where the natives home. went. It was hot. Just I don't know what month, but it was very, very May. hot mm -hmm. at that particular time. And they were all out in the field, you know, working and just dripping. They were so hot. And he came out in a sheepskin coat, and he was cold. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in the Pacific oh, area. Oh, yeah. yeah. And my blood was thin. I was very aware of that. Quite an impression. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know. It's where I think, honey. We have some black squirrels. You ever see black squirrels? Yeah. Okay. I've seen a lot of squirrels. I've only seen a half a team of big giants. Is that right? Have you seen white ones? Yeah. Okay. I've seen gray ones, I've seen red ones, some brown ones. You ever see a flying squirrel? At the zoo. At the zoo. Uh, Were bugs a problem? Uh, no, they had DDT. It went all over everything. They, <laughs> It was, a it was a legacy to leave in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they just... They, they'd fly over there and they took care of the bugs. Hmm. And you too. Perhaps. <laughs> I mean, you were there, weren't you? Yes, I was there. So they sprayed you also. Yeah. Did you live in tents? I say tents here. No, oh, no. I was uh, always on a vessel. But that's the, well, the main that's island at Ulithi. And the LST I, didn't have... Uh, a place to live, did it? Uh, yeah, this, uh, we were on the LCT, and yeah. Where, is, where did you live? Well, it's at the back. Uh, I've never so really... There were two styles of them, okay. and I was on the oldest style for the okay, most part. maybe I haven't got there yet. <laughs> well, there'll be a picture somewhere, I think, that illustrates it better. Well, oh, my gosh. Yeah, Jason. Oh, there's the movie. movie. Yeah. Did you oh, see the movie? Oh, he's... Here. Did Here's the movie. Did you see the movie? There's where the, that's the screen. And here's the seating, you see. Comfortable, huh? <laughs> the cemetery was already there when you arrived? Well, I, I know nothing about the Another cemetery. Another man told us that when he got off the boat, the first thing he saw was natives dry, or digging a circle of graves around the American flag. Mm. This is before the battle. And, and I'm seeing this in a circle. <laughs> oh, well, no, I, here's the cemetery back here. I, I think most thing. Navy people were deep-sixed. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that happened. I think there was one on the troop ship. They had these Quonset huts yeah. Yeah, everywhere. Well, what was the temperature like then? Oh, it was like a we'd permanent vacation. Trade winds. It was hot, I suppose, mm -hmm. but we we didn't wear any clothes. Mm -hmm. And even on a cool day, you really didn't need any extra clothing. And there were some cloudy. There were some cloudy days and some storms. And what now and then you might put on a long sleeve shirt or something. But for the most part, it was. What was your rank? Pleasant. I was a fireman, first class or er, second class. That was my final rating. So, and the fireman, well, like electrician's mate, second class, I guess they call it. Um, to begin with. 
Well, that's what I ended up with. You, you start off as a seaman, and then when you go to a technical school, if you are assigned eventually to the engine room, which would be an electrician, and then you become a fireman instead of a seaman. So I was, I was rated a fireman, but actually the, the rating was electrician's mate. So you just, you worked with then with the, the motor then? Is that what you uh, on this little vessel, I was in charge of everything electrical. There was a generator, mm -hmm. and there were motors and lights. And, motor. and how many did you say were on at one of those at a time? Oh, Ten? Uh, nine to eleven, something like that. There would be a cook, um, you know, the officer in charge, a lieutenant, um, usually right out of school. <laughs> and uh, yeah, is this your ship? Yeah, that's that's the one, and let's see if we can see what they're back looking here. for. Yeah, back there. Sort of there like was a the tarp hanging over an area, that was the patio, sort of, you know. Sort of like the barges on the Mississippi, really. Yeah, it, it was very compact. And then there was a conning tower up here. Here we are up on top, you see, that there mm -hmm. would be a, where the uh, officer would stand when you're underway, and he could direct from there, and we had a speaking tube down to the... The control house, the wheelhouse, was down one level, and he would talk to us through a speaking tube. And there, there were three engines, and he'd direct you to, to run the engines forward or reverse, such and such speeds. And these were and people that really hadn't had a lot of experience. None. And then there was a wheel, one man on the wheel. So it took two men in the in the wheelhouse and and the skipper to run the vessel. Hmm. Plus people to... So did you ever run into anything? People to throw <laughs> lines and that kind of thing. Well... I, I can see where, you, where that could... You know, talking about scary times when we went in after the war, went into Yap. The harbor had been mined. And there was a narrow channel that was clear, but the rest was not. And they had mines on sticks. And we had people stationed on the bow that we went in, look for these things, and make sure we stay in the channel. Mm -hmm. And I was up on the bow. That's the front part. And you're hoping, <laughs> you're, and you're hoping that whoever's yeah. guiding this thing knows what they're yeah. doing. Let's not have it on my corner, please. <laughs> oh, another time I was standing on a whole bunch of uh, mines, or where the depth charges, probably depth charges. And they, uh, there was a package with the caps, but the, that's what starts the whole explosion. And I wasn't really aware they pitched them down to me from the ship above. And threw I them? Threw them in the air, and I, I'm, I caught them, fortunately, but you know, if you hadn't caught them, that could start a chain reaction. <laughs> After it's all over, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> 18 year olds. Yeah. Did you have a question? Did you ever have any planes on your side? No, the planes on our side. Uh, you mean on on our vessel or anything like that? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. uh, we were too small for that, but we did see a lot of airplanes. Yeah. Prior Germany. No, no. It, we, I don't know that I ever saw any Japanese planes either, all Americans. There were some on the island. There was a picture there in the book of one at the landing strip. And then, of course, aircraft carriers had lots of planes. We saw lots of them on there. Were the aircraft carriers? Yeah. I don't think I ever saw any Japanese ships. <laughs> Love that. Oh, my gosh, we did have backs on these seats, didn't we, at the movie? Yeah, there it is. Oh, my gosh. Well, that was on the other island. Because at Ulithi, we didn't have bags. That one's on, in color. Okay. I'm surprised somebody didn't put a sign, Los Angeles or San Francisco or yeah. something. These are signs that says uh, Naval Base, Fleet Post Office, Base Hospital, Boat oh. Pool, mm -hmm. Orange Beach. Maybe there was some rule about thou shalt not be faced. Yeah, <laughs> probably. But I could see that happening. Oh, my God. But Jason can get on the Internet and look up Peleliu, and you can go up there on that mountain and look around. And you can see some old tanks, I think, on, on the website. Well, that's a pretty fancy building.
You got some wonderful pictures. Well, my parents sent the camera, uh, a 35 millimeter camera out after the war. Of course, we weren't allowed to have any during the war. So I took some of these photos after the war. And, uh, but there was a problem. I, I saved the film to take home and some of it got moldy and you can see mold patterns on some of the pictures. Oh, mm -hmm. Because everything molded. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's a very typical scene. Um, this would be a cargo ship? Yeah. Well, when you left, did you know where you were going after, you know, when you got on, on board? You never knew ahead of time. Well, yeah, when we were assigned to pick up cargo and so forth. But I mean on but the initial... initial. Uh, no, no, not a clue. I was absolutely amazed when I got a landing craft and it was... That and was a very it. sobering experience because I visioned something different than I ended up doing. Mm -hmm. Our craft was just too old to send on out in, uh, in the battle situations. Mm -hmm. Not not a very dependable thing. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of, a lot of time repairing. And of course, if you didn't have anything to do, you could always chip paint. Mm -hmm. In the navy, you have a little hammer with kind of a blade on it, and you chip, 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 chip little pockets of rust. And then when you're done chipping, you, you brush it and then paint it. Otherwise, the, the whole thing, the whole vessel turns to a rust bucket, which it kind of does anyway. So that was one of your that, things that, to That's do. a hobby you could always do. Yeah. <laughs> Need special training. <laughs> Were you assigned that or you just knew you had to do it? Well, th that would be the skipper would, you know, if there's nothing much going on, you can chip paint. Or, Oh. You know, there was something to do. Mm -hmm. It kept you busy. Is this a jet plane? You know, I, that would have been on, uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably, I don't know what, I don't know what that plane was. And I didn't take the picture. Somebody gave them to me or I traded them or something. Mm -hmm. These Did came to me after the war. Did you ever have any officers that you really didn't 